Hello, yeah, my name is Philip Schössler, and uh, this work was um, done together with my colleagues, Daniel Windham, Daniel Leitinger, Sean Fulmer, and uh, Professor Hiroshi Ishii. And during this presentation, I will present techniques that showcase the ability of a shape display to assemble, disassemble, and reassemble structures from plane or magnetic blocks. And after that, I will present special kinematic blocks that can extend input and output capabilities of a shape display. So in previous research, we have shown that pin-based shape displays can not only give physical form to digital information, but they can also reliably and precisely move objects that are placed on top of them. In this work, we went one step further and examined the ability of our current inform system to automatically create simple structures. And we use wooden blocks as our fundamental building blocks just for their simplicity and versatility. One big motivation for this research is the fact that current shape displays are still very limited in terms of their output. For example, we cannot display overhangs or overpasses or any shape that is tapered towards the bottom. And all rendered shapes are attached to the shape display as, at the moment and cannot be taken off. So we think that the combination of passive objects and the dynamic shape can be one way to overcome those limitations. And related works to our project can be described in four categories. There are tangible construction kits, such as active cubes, which are very common form factor in tangible user interfaces, especially as CAD tools. Though their actuation and the ability to automatically rearrange themselves has been less researched. Actuated tangible tabletop interfaces like Pico or Magit uh, provide the possibility to automatically move tokens to synchronize with the system's computational state. And shape displays such as Festo's wave handling system explored the ability to move objects through shape change. Our work also touches um, on the field of modular robotics and self-assembly, where researchers try to form complex robots out of simpler modules such as M-blocks. And if we look closer as, at the vast research space of actuated assembly and the types of actuation energy, we can divide the field into four areas. So either the actuation happens from inside the building block itself or from the outside, which you can see on, on the x-axis. Um, and we can see that the actuated, and yeah, the actuation energy itself uh, can be either undirected or directed um, as it is in our kinetic blocks, which you, which you can see on the y-axis. And we can see that actuated assembly with shape displays presents a design space that is also shared with robotic arms. But in terms of interactions, we have some clear advantages towards the other techniques. So for one, our system is, is very robust. So we don't have any fragile connectors, connectors or actuation mechanism that could break when a user, user touches them. Um, also safety, so compared to robotic arms, we can avoid colliding with the user while collaborating on a surface. Um, we can also move multiple blocks simultaneously to speed up the construction process. Also, our blocks are fairly simple and cheap and easy to manufacture. Now, to be able to automatically assemble structures on a shape display, we first need to be able to reliably move uh, the blocks across the surface and rotate them if necessary. And translation works by creating a, what we call slat around the block. So we lift one side of the block by 45 degrees and can thereby slide or tumble it across the surface and the rail around it will keep it inside this, uh, this confined space. X, Y, Z rotation works by creating a barrier around the block and lifting it on one side to tumble it and C rotation can be achieved by rotating the block around its x-axis, then y-axis, and then x-axis again, which rotates the whole thing 90 degrees around the c-axis. And we explored several different stacking techniques. So here we simply lift the cube to tumble it on top of the others. Um, the pins around the block form a guiding rail and thereby prevent the cube from overshooting and also help with alignment. And since we are limited by our system to an actuation height of 10 centimeter, um, we can only stock, uh, stack two-story structures. But by employing a block as a helper object, we can stack 
up to three-story structures, but lose the benefit of the guiding rail, and therefore structures are not as precise as in the technique before. An alternative stacking technique is to catapult the blocks on top of the other. So with our current inform system, we can create two-story structures or three-story structures by employing the, help, the helper object technique again. Certain structures can also be stacked by using the shape display to create a temporary scaffold. And for more sophisticated and permanent structures, we developed the so-called locking blocks that can connect to each other using magnets. And here a user can select between two structures from a tablet computer that are then assembled on the shape display. The locking blocks also allow us to create multi-story structures in a different way. We can assemble the structure on the horizontal plane and then lift it into its vertical position. And here we also showcase the disassembly and reassembly of one structure into another. That's it. So the disassembly of blocks can be done in two different ways. One, so a structure from plane blocks can just be knocked over completely, or it can be slightly tilted and supported by the pins so that the topmost block will slide off, but the rest of the structure will remain intact, um, as you can see on the left side. And the locking blocks can be disconnected by bouncing a row of pins against uh, the block side that is closest to its connection. And we also evaluated our techniques by running the different movements uh, 100 times and recorded successes and misses. And we rec uh, regard a sequence as a miss if we lose the block from the sled or if the stacked block is misaligned. And misalignment for us meant if 20% of its surface area is not resting on the bottom block. And we can see that even though the movements right now are performed in an open loop system, so we don't have sensory feedback, um, we achieve a fairly high uh, success rate. And even stacking higher structures by catapulting is very reliable. And in section 8, H, you can, we can see that the success rate drops. Um, and it drops the more, the more complicated the whole structure gets. So there it became clear that we are approaching the limits of our open loop loop system. And here are some snippets of some failed attempts that occurred during the process of prototyping um, the motion sequences. So one error accumulates and then the whole thing just doesn't work. Um, we also tested the ability to remotely assemble structures. So for that, we explored two different approaches. The first approach was to track the block's movement um, live and try to interpret the movement, the user's movement. And the second approach was to ignore the user's movement and only look at the resting structures. And the remote end then determines the best path um, movement to recreate the structure. And we can not only assemble structures, but they can, we can also animate them afterwards. So here on the left you see a small castle with a drawbridge. On the top you see a low resolution bird flapping its wings and on the bottom you see a little worm. And for the implementation, so everything was done on our current inform system, which is this machine that has 900 actuated pins that can move up and down within the range of 10 centimeters and each pin can lift um, a weight up, of, up to uh, 100 grams. Um, the wooden building blocks have an edge length of five by five by five centimeter and weigh 90 grams. And as magnetic connectors, we used spherical neodymium magnets that we put into custom 3D printed shells. And this allowed them to freely move within the, within the shells and so they would change the polarization as needed so we could connect them to any side in any orientation. And on the software side, we wrote a script um, for the 3D animation tool 3ds Max, which offers a lot of possibilities for animation. Um, then that allowed us also, the script allowed us to render shapes in real time on the, on the shape display. 
which was very good tool for, for prototyping and um, achieving the animations. We then used ray tracing and a special shader to render out the sequences as a gray scale image and could then play it back on the shape display. So now that we managed to move and assemble simple blocks, we were curious if we could construct more sophisticated blocks that had internal structures that could be controlled through the shape display. So, and as a proof of concept, we built four kinematic modules that all perform a special function in combination with the shape display. So on the left, you see the extender, which is basically just a pin extension that can be put on top of the pins to get to build structures that are uh, higher um, than in the video before you saw the hanger, which is a simple system that has hooks that hook onto the pins to create overhangs. And here I would like to go more into detail on the slider and the rotator. Um, these two tools, these two um, blocks, um, use the pin's vertical movement and translate it into other degrees of freedom, such as horizontal and rotational movement. And how that works is, in the rotator, is we push two linear gears with the pins, in, um, which then in turn drive two bevel gears that are inside the, the block. And this allows us to rotate the knob on top of the whole thing 315 degrees in both directions. And since we can use the shape displays pins as sensors, we can use the rotator for input and for output. And for translation of vertical into horizontal movement, we use the linear gears and then attach a lever to drive the slider on, on this block. So here it's the same thing as the rotator before. We can use it as output or as an input module. And all these uh, modules were designed in Rhino and we then printed them on a Stratasys FDM 3D printer. So this whole system still has um, limitation. And as mentioned before, we are performing in an open loop system and do not yet have real time error correction. We are also lim limited by the shape displays, relatively low resolution and motors as to how fast we can build structures and as to how detailed those structures can be. And Besides many, good, many technical improvements, in the future we would like to explore different application space, spaces such as CAD tools, educational toolkits, or even music interfaces. And I presented the plane, the magnetic, and the kinematic blocks. And in future work, we also plan to look further into the combination of the different blocks on the shape display and to explore possible new techniques and, and applications. And the research I showed today also presents another instance towards our radical atoms vision. And this concludes my presentation of kinetic blocks, and uh, I'm now happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Philip. That's a lovely talk. You have a question here? Can we have a microphone? Rong Hao Leong from National Taiwan University, and I like the way you stack the block by putting them. Uh, uh, it seems like the height of parking becomes a limitation, uh, just like you cannot build a skyscraper using this system. So I'm wondering, uh, have you considered to use an, a robotic arm or a magnetic levitator to incorporate your system to stack higher? That's one way to stack higher, but we can probably stack indefinitely high by either assembling it on a horizontal and then tilting it up, or using the magnetic blocks or the helpers to help assemble, as I showed in the um, slide well, before uh, I, here. I mean that probably you can uh, use your zero-n on zero -on system with this uh, ship uh, to stack higher. Have you uh, considered this? Zero-n, yeah, we have not yet looked into it, but it's, it's definitely a possibility, yeah. Okay, thank you. Do you have any more questions? Um, so I have a question for you. Um, so there's been quite a bit of work in uh, Claytronics with um, actuated moats, uh, small robots that 
try to climb on top of each other. There's been Mex Mexican bean robots and self-balancing robots. Uh, how does this work compare to that, and what do you think some of the advantages of your approach are? So all this modular robotics, they look at the structures themselves and see them only as robots, and they have less focus on the human interaction with these systems, and that's something we try to focus on, definitely. That's the, the probably the biggest, um, the biggest um, difference to our, to our approach. Thank you.